This video discusses functions part two, especially talking about inverses of a hyperbola and of exponential graphs. We can talk about the hyperbola first. They don't often ask you to invert the hyperbola, but if you are asked, this is how you would do it. The graph in red is the graph f, which is the original hyperbola. It has the equation y is equal to four over x plus two minus one. So we know that our vertical asymptote is x is equal to minus two, and our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to minus one. Now, when we invert the graph, we know that we, all we have to do is swap the x and y values. So we get x is equal to four over y plus two minus one. Now we need to get y on its own. We take the one to the other side, we multiply through by the denominator, we foil the left-hand side. Now we're left with x, y plus y, plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 4. What we need to do now is get all the y terms alone on the left-hand side. So we take the 2x and the 2 to the right-hand side. Then we factorize out a y, and we're left with y times x plus 1 is equal to minus 2x plus 2. Now we divide each side by x plus 1, and we're left with y is equal to minus 2x plus 2 over x plus 1. Now, if you didn't know, this is actually the equation for a hyperbola, but we're used to seeing it as there's no x in the numerator. What we have to do then is use long division. We, we don't often do this because they don't often ask for the inverse of a hyperbola, but if you were to do this, you'd have to use long division. So we divide the numerator by the denominator. We take the minus 2x, the first term, and we divide it by x, leaving us with minus 2. Then we take this minus 2, multiply it by x, we get minus 2x. Take the minus 2, multiply it by 1, we get minus 2. Then we subtract minus 2x minus 2 from the original numerator, minus 2x plus 2. Minus 2x minus minus 2x gives us 0, plus 2 minus minus 2 gives us 4. This is our remainder. Now all we need to do is take this back into the form y equals. We know that our remainder still goes over the denominator, so we get y is equal to 4 over x plus 1. And this term here, above the numerator where we're dividing, is left on its own over here. This, as we can see, is a normal hyperbola. y is equal to 4 over x plus 1 minus 2, with the vertical asymptote at x is equal to minus 1 and the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to minus two. And we can see we've sketched it there. So the green graph is the graph of f to the minus one, which is the inverse graph of the red graph. We can see that if we were to draw the line y is equal to x, it would intersect the two graphs at around about these points. So these graphs too do intersect on the line y equals x. Now we're gonna look at inverses of exponential graphs. These are often asked. These are quite important because the inverse of an exponential graph is the log graph. We'll start with a simple one. Y is equal to two to the X. That's the red graph drawn here. If we invert this, we swap the X and Y and get X is equal to two to the Y. But what do we do now? We use the log rule. Writing x is equal to a to the y is exactly the same thing as writing y is equal to log base a of x, i.e. x is equal to 2 to the y is exactly the same as writing y is equal to log base 2 x. All we need to do now is remember to restrict the domain, which we always do for log graphs. We can see that our green graph drawn here, which is y is equal to log base 2x, is only defined when x is greater than zero. We write that there. Basically, when you're defining your domain, this term here, so the log term basically, always must be greater than zero. We'll see another example where it's not just x. The important thing to remember is this conversion. These two terms are exactly the same thing. If we look at a slightly harder example, we've got the exponential graph, y is equal to two to the x minus one, minus one, sketched here in red. 
we can see that there is a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to minus 1. If we want to invert it, we swap the x and y. Now we have x is equal to 2 to the y minus 1. Take minus 1. Take this minus 1 to the other side so that the y term is left on its own. Now we use the log rule. We get y minus 1, so this power here, is equal to log base 2 of x plus 1. Now we simply take the 1 to the other side, the minus 1 here, to this side. And we left with y is equal to log base 2 of x plus 1 plus 1. Now we know that this term, this x plus 1, must always be greater than 0. Therefore, what must x be greater than to make this term greater than 0? x must be greater than minus 1. To, to look at a simplified version of log graphs, when a, so this base, is a fraction, a positive fraction between 0 and 1, this is how the log graph would look. Your exponential graph would look something like that. Now, when we've got a is greater than 1, we know that our exponential graph would be like that, which means that our log graph looks like the green line. If we were to look at a basic example, if we have y is equal to log base 2 of x, you'd get the blue line, i.e. this a value is greater than 1. And we must remember that to define the, the domain as x is always greater than 0. If we had a base of a is equal to a half, i.e. a is a positive fraction, your graph would be on the right-hand side of the y-axis, but a decreasing log graph. So now if we look on these two graphs, we first have y is equal to log base a half of minus x. We know that the a value is a positive fraction, and the x value is minus x, which means that x must be less than 0 for this graph to be defined, because this term, minus x, must be greater than 0. That's why you've got this blue graph drawn here. Over here, we have y is equal to log base 2 of minus x. Again, we must have it on the left-hand side of the y-axis so that the graph is defined and this minus x is greater than 0. Because we've got a base of 2, our graph is a decreasing graph. If we move on to log laws, there are four main important log laws. The first log law is that the log of a product is equal to the log of one factor plus the log of the other factor of that product. For example, log base 2 of 12, well, two factors that, equal, that multiply together equal 12 are 3 and 4. So log base 2 of 12 is equal to log base 2 of 3 plus log base 2 of 4. Now, the, the important thing to remember is that the bases must always be the same. You can't go log base 2 of 3 plus log base 3 of 4 and expect to get log base something of 12. The bases must always be the same. The second log law is similar. The log of a quotient is equal to the log of one factor minus the log of another factor. For example, for example the log base 3 of 8 over 5 is equal to log base 3 of the numerator, 8, minus log base 3 of the denominator, 5. The third log law is quite easy. The log base n of something to the power of something is equal to that power, taking that power to the front. Now we must remember that this n is only speaking about the a, not about the whole log. For example, log base 2 of 9 is the same thing as saying log base 2 of 3 squared, because 9 is equal to 3 squared. And now we can take the squared power to the front and get 2 log base 2 of 3. The fourth log law is the change of base law. If you have a base of a, you can change it using this rule to get another base, for example, base b. So log base a of x is equal to log base b of x, this thing, over log base b of a, your original base. So for example, log base 2 of 3 what if we don't want a base of 2? What if we want a base of 5? Well, then we can change it using the change of base law. We can go log base 5 of 3 over log base 5 of 2. 
Now there are a few other rules. They aren't log laws, but they're just interesting rules that we can also use to help us when we're working with log equations, log expressions, and sketching log graphs. So the first one is log base a of a is equal to one. So log base two of two is one. Log base three of three is one. Log base four of four is one. And if you use this formula that I showed you here, and you work between the two, you can see that this makes sense. So we'll go back to our rules. Log base one over a of a is minus one. And it's the same concept, use that rule again. If we go log base b of a, we can rewrite it as one over log base a of b. If we've got log base a of one, it equals zero, i.e. log base a of one, log base anything of one is equal to zero. And that makes sense because if we rewrite it as x is equal to a to the y, we know that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. Another thing to note is that if there is no base, so just log of a, that's the same thing as writing log base 10. So for example, if we look here, log of three is the same thing as writing log base 10 of three. So if you see a log without a base, you know that the base is 10. A third thing or another thing is that when you have a base and a fraction, if you reciprocate this here, you also must reciprocate the base. So log base b of one over a is the same thing as log base one over b of a. The last thing to note is that if you have a base of a fraction, you can rewrite it as just the fraction without. The last thing to note is that if you have a base of a fraction, you can rewrite that by take, putting a negative in the front and taking away the fraction, writing only the denominator, as long as the fraction is one over. So for example, log base one over three of a is the same thing as writing minus log base three of a. And again, if you refer back to that original rule that I gave you, you can figure out how this, log, this thing makes sense. If we look at a few common errors that people make when working with log equations, here are some of them. The first one is saying that log of x plus log of y is equal to log of x plus y. This does not make sense. Log is not a factor. Log is, for example, like sine. You can't take away, factorize out the sine or the log. We know from our base rules, from our log rules that we looked at above, that log of x plus log of y is equal to log of x times y. This is the product rule, log law number one. And the same thing for this. This is a common error regarding log law number two. For number three, you can't factorize out or cancel out a log. It is not a number or expression on its own. It must have an x or a y or a variable or a number with it. We know here that instead of writing log x over log y is equal to x over y and cancelling out the logs, we must actually write log x over log y is equal to log base y of x. And this would be example chain of the change of base law. The next common error is that writing log x times log x is equal to log x squared. That writing it like this makes us think that the squared only belongs to the x, when in fact the squared belongs to the whole log x. So you must put brackets there. And another thing is writing that log of x squared, where in this case the squared does only belong to the x, is equal to log x squared, log x times log x. We know from rule number three, log law number three, that when we have a power of only the x, it, we can take it to the front and write it as two log x. And number six, another thing to note is that log of minus x is only defined when x is less than zero. This is what we've spoken about quite a lot, where this term here has to be greater than zero for the log to be defined. I've put out a few examples below of 
looking at log, simplifying, expanding, solving log equations, um, rewriting log equations in different ways. And you can go through those. I'll pause for a moment on each of them. Pause the video, maybe take a screenshot, take a picture. Try and do these examples on your own or just look through them from my writing. And if you have any questions, you can send any of us an email or a message, contact us on our Facebook page or on our Instagram, and we'll get back to you and we'll help you with some of these examples.